This is Barbarian Ultimate Warrior, also known as Death Sword. It's a 1987 game developed by Palace Software for the Commodore 64 originally. As you can see, Barbarian is a fighting game that gives players control over two sword wheeling barbarians. In the game's two player mode, players pit their characters against each other, but in a single player mode, the player's barbarian braves a series of challenges set by an evil wizard to rescue a princess. The controls work by holding down the fire button and moving the controller to pull off different moves, such as sword attacks, kicks or even a headbutt. Each barbarian has 12 life points, which are represented as 6 circles in the top corners of the interface. A successful attack on the barbarian takes away one of his life points. So the game sounds pretty simple, but it does take a lot of practice to actually master. The first port we'll take a look at is on the Acorn Electron, a system we don't see too often on Battle of the Ports. This is a curious port as the main battles run quite fast. I'm sure it's not the emulation either as the little green goblin guy who walks on at the end of a match moves at the correct speed. Needless to say that this port feels a lot more responsive than the Commodore 64 version. Here we go with the ZX Spectrum port. This one mixes things up a bit with different background arenas and less hit point icons being shown. This doesn't mean you can kill an opponent with less hits mind you. Oh no, now it takes more hits to deplenish a hit point. As for how this version plays, well not bad if I'm being honest and I do like how large the enemies are as well. Compared to the previous versions we've taken a look at, this Amstrad CPC port looks really nice. Good use of colour, well defined graphics and smooth motion. It plays rather well too. Just a shame it's a little tougher than the other versions so far. Next up is the Apple II version from Designer Software. Now this is an odd one. No matter what I did, the game would only boot into the demo mode. Even though I configured the joystick and all that, still the game boots into demo mode. How odd. So unfortunately I can't comment on how it plays, but judging by how it moves, it looks to be similar to the Commodore 64 original. Even the BBC Micro got a port of Barbarian, and guess what? It's just like the Acorn Electron version, which means that it was running at the correct speed. It also means that this BBC Micro port is also just as fluid when it comes to gameplay. Whoever would have thought a BBC Micro port would be one of the better playing versions. Let's finish off the 8 bit systems with the Atari port for the 400. Now, this one was produced by LK Avalon, a Polish company. 
While the graphics are totally monochrome, they do look quite impressive. It's just a shame that the game is a right bitch to play, thanks to the Hyper CPU AI. Let's move on to the 16-bit versions, first with the Amiga. As you can hear, we now have some pretty cool prepare to die speech, along with all manner of grunts and screams. The clanking of swords is also a nice touch. Graphically, it looks nice enough. It certainly isn't going to win any awards, but it is pleasant enough. Next up is the Atari ST version, which is pretty much the same as the Amiga version. Although I do like the addition of Battle Commence, written at the bottom of the play area. All other versions so far just say Player 1. DOS also got a port with support for EGA and CDA graphics. We are going with the EGA here. This port was handled by Designer Software. Hang on a minute, where did we see that name? Oh yeah, they also handled the Apple II port, and as you'd expect, this MS-DOS version is pretty much identical. Barbarian even got ported to Java running mobile devices. It plays very much just like the computer versions, but now has a much more modern look to the graphics. It's just a shame the sound isn't as good as the ST or Amiga versions. And here's something special, Francois Lekornek, I know I've screwed that name up, has developed a Mega Drive port, but not just one version, oh no, he made ports for many formats all running on the Mega Drive. How about that for dedication? Each port was programmed from scratch in C. I love how he adds little different credits to each version as well. Let's see all of his Mega Drive Barbarian ports running. Yeah. 
And let's take a look at all those versions of Barbarian running side by side.